Uh, how do you deal with uh, the grey days of your life? For example, some days you don't want to work at your full 100% potential. So, how do you handle those days and how do you uh, buck up yourself to like work on those topics that you left for that day? or the days when I don't feel like working. Uh, well, uh, for one thing, I don't have the luxury of that indulgence. Most of, the, uh, most of the time, what happens in a job like mine is that the work takes you along. It's the momentum of the work in which you are swept. So rather than, uh, uh, and at that time, you really don't have time to think. See, if you are handling a riot, for example, or if you are uh, conducting elections, or simply you, are, you have to chair a meeting, you don't feel uh, maybe all that good, but you just do it nonetheless. But to give you an example, a very uh, uh, simple example, about a week ago I had uh, gone to Chikmagalur on election duty. I was uh, election observer, I am election observer for uh, Chikmagalur district and I had gone uh, to Chikmagur, which is about a five hour journey from Bangalore by road. A good road, but still a long journey. And then when I reached Chikmagur, I went further into the into the district as far as Kudrim, which was uh, another six hour journey up and down and uh, not very good road. And I uh, tore a muscle by merely poor driving. And see, you must understand that this is again the lesson of life. You don't have the kind of support system which can act as a real support. So, merely because of poor and casual driving, I have torn a muscle. But there was still the business of a job to get back to. I could not take the luxury of uh, taking time off. And while I am recuperating, I had about a three hour meeting yesterday because the new year's budget has to be launched. I had two speaking engagements the very day we met, yeah. both in the morning, one was in Tumkur and one was uh, in Bangalore, so two speaking engagements and then this. So you don't really have the luxury. Having said that, I still try to go with the flow. So when there is a little bit of time, and I never used to do it in my early days, but maybe with age and maturity and the children growing up and your domestic responsibilities have become less. Whenever there is a little less uh, work, pressure of work, then I try to take a little time off. So that kind of, you know, balances the very, very busy days. So a bad hair day is not a luxury I can indulge in. Yeah, please. Can you pass on the mic to... Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm from Computer Science MD and I will just have a very simple question. Uh, in today's world, we have so much of social media all around us and you just said something about uh, a negative comment stuck with you for a very long time. What pointers could you just share with us so that we can try to avoid such negative things from so many sources around us and try to find some focus point where we can actually move forward? Uh, I think uh, what I said, uh, the example from my own life, which was uh, which is a rarity in our times. But now uh, I think that kind of uh, commentating has proliferated multifold. Uh, from my own experience, I have never developed a thick skin, right? Uh, I should have, but I have not. So one simple prescription for you is to develop a th thick skin if you can. But if you are like me, then the, I think the best antidote to whether uh, negative or positive feedback is self-awareness. You must know yourself. You must be honest with yourself. Never try to lie to yourself. If you are cutting class to have a good time, at least you should know that that is why you are doing, not you know that you have some social responsibility to uh, take care of elsewhere. So always 
be true, not just true, but be aware of yourself. And that will help you to sift the grain from the shaft. See, uh, I I am not against social media. In fact, I feel it's one of the best things which happened to us. Millions of people who are quiet, reserved, uh, too timid to talk, all of them at least have a friend in the virtual world, if not in the real world. So, it has done a lot, and as a means of communication, it's I mean, simply brilliant. So, but this can happen. Somebody can give you constructive criticism. Now, if you develop a thick skin, what will happen is that you will ignore both the good and the bad feedback, something which will be good for you. So, even that you may tend to ignore. So, always keep that touchstone of your mind and your heart and your knowledge of yourself and everything which is said to you can be tested against that touchstone. It's not a long procedure. It can happen in a flash. Now, if you are very good in your studies and I say you are a fool, then your touchstone will tell you immediately that, no, there is evidence to say that I am good and I am not a fool. So, I think the best antidote is self awareness So, any further questions? One, two, three, so no questions, but I have some questions. Ma'am, uh, the current generation, what I see is, there are too many avenues for them, too many opportunities. At times, you know, they are confused to realize their potential, to understand where exactly they have to move, to understand their passion. They take so much of time. And they work somewhere and at the end of the day they are not happy because at the end of the day being happy is very important. That is the fundamental goal. That's the basic goal. So my question to you is, uh, was it a childhood dream like you know you want to become an IAS officer or in the journey you realize, hey, this is what I, I want to do in my life. How it was, or somebody motivated you, or somebody helped you in realizing your potential. Can you please uh, share with us? Uh, see, there are two questions in one. I try to touch upon the first one first. It is true that, unlike our time, the choices now have multiplied. So there are a lot of things before you on the platter. That said, your the way we have structured our education, it is somewhat of a straight jacket. In, uh, you have you do your PCMB when you are in 12th. So even at that time, you would be thinking of you know PCMC, PCMB. PCMC goes to engineering, PCMB goes to medicine, and then everybody else tries to flounder around whether they can get BCom or what they can get into. This is the way. So, but still, the choices have still increased, and I think overall it's a good thing that uh, you uh, you know you. You start off, let us say, as a mid-level executive in a uh, corporation, but uh, somewhere along the line, if you have a passion to do stand-up comedy, it is possible today. It was not possible in my time. So, that way, I think that's a good thing. Now, the coming to that uh, second thing, see, I lived in that straight-jacketed world, right? There was not much of, uh, so you can imagine my coming out of IIT, is uh, far, far more significant than one of you coming out of a PhD program or an engineering program today because the opportunities are much more. But uh, what had happened at that time was that I had certain specific, very clear research interests and IIT is simply IIT Madras. I, the mistake, the real mistake which I made was that I joined IIT Madras and not IIT Kanpur or Kharagpur, which I should have. Because I topped the exam, I could have chosen any of the IITs. And this was a research program. This is not the engineering degree. So for a research program, you need to have a very good intellectual fit. And I felt that IIT Madras did not have those academic resources. A wonderful institution. I still love it. And very, very supportive faculty. But the, the intellectual resources, the academic resources that I needed were not available at that time. And I, I don't know, I would still call it not a daring decision, but a foolish decision given the context I fit in. And then uh, it was mere serendipity. What, would, what do I do then? Well, I've done my post-graduation and uh, I've quit the PhD program. And so what do I do? And uh, my parents somewhat, but it was more a neighbor. And it, it, again, this was the uh, India of 30, 40 years ago, where neighbors were as good as family. So we used to keep running in and out of uh, each other's homes and it was one uh, 
very interested neighbor who actually pushed me and said, me, you must write, you must write, you must write. Every time he saw me, he said, you must write. And his mother used to make, he was old, but his mother was older and she, was, she used to make this wonderful sundal. And for the sake of sundal, I used to go to the sundal, you know, six piece with the coconut and all that. So that sundal used to attach me to their home. And every time he saw me, he used to pester me, say, you know, you must write, you must write. And that's how I got interested and I did. But then I had this uh, thing in my heart that I never completed the PhD which I started. And that dream of earning a doctoral degree, I fulfilled midway in my career. Uh, I, when I joined the PhD program in IIM Bangalore in 2007 and completed in 2013. So that, um, what you say, unfulfilled dream was fulfilled many, many years later. But again, you have a lot of choices. But you also, you know, the too many choices also is a problem. Because then your mind will waver in all the direction, let me do this, let me do that. So again, uh, what I had uh, told in answer to your question, you must sit with yourself and really think that what are my plans A, B and C, if not more. So maybe you spent the first 10 years being an engineer in a corporate setting and then move on to something else. And the, today the world offers enough opportunities to do that. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, uh, you know, one thing like uh, you had a lot many, lot many uh, uh, women empowerment programs under the CSR scheme, lot many activities in the villages and uh, uh, many other places to ensure that, you know, you uh, women are empowered. Well, I'm uh, saying this is day in, day out, year in, year out, you know, I meet lot many corporates, but I'm not able to see women in the leadership position. That is because of various reasons. They say that work-life balance, that is one of the reasons. And second reason, they say that it's very difficult to break the class ceiling. That's what they say. My question to you is, uh, uh, please share your thought process on this. And point number two, how do you balance uh, work life? See, uh, I do not know from personal experience, I would say. Because all said and done, government is still the best employer. And we don't uh, face uh, that kind of discrimination to the extent that exists in the corporate uh, domain. So in the government, uh, woman, man or donkey, you still, you will, uh, you know, you complete that certain number of years and you are found fit, you will just move on to the next level and that's how we rise up in our, determined by seniority come merit, but seniority does play a huge role. Secondly, in government, uh, you, if you take time off and, uh, uh, you know, either uh, to bring up a child, then you have a two-year maternity leave, well, not maternity leave, child care leave. You also have maternity leave, which is separate. So we, and it doesn't affect really your seniority because that leave, which is authorized leave, is still part of your duty. You are still, this is in far as the public domain is concerned. The private domain is very, very difficult. I have uh, been uh, with, worked with NGOs who try to do this rehabilitation thing, that those women who have left either to give birth to a child or bring up a child and then come back into the corporate domain, what do you do? And one way, I think, is to make your, keep your skills intact. See, more and more, you need to develop some specialized and niche skills which you alone can do. I mean, you can't be the only person in the world to do that. That will be too special. But, you know, certain expertise that you develop, that maybe you know better how to deal with uh, government business than anybody else. Or you would know better a specific uh, area of within engineering, you are how to build a metro. Maybe you are the expert. So keep those skills intact. And I would say that for both women and men. I mean, it doesn't really, see. so you need to keep your uh, uh, skills and develop certain special skills that even if you are off work, People should be able to come to you and ask you, what, what should I do? Now, if you are a, a management professional, then somebody may come and say, I, I want to deal with this specific HR problem. You are the best person to advise me. So that kind of uh, thing. So, so much of the work which I do is outside my specific domain of uh, government work. So because I have developed so much expertise, and now it's very easy to develop expertise. You can read, you can join a MOOC, or any other uh, thing. So there are many, very, very many ways 
to develop your expertise. And what was the other question? How do I maintain the uh, work-life balance? Same the answer which I gave, I go with the flow.